Okay, get ready to tomar apuntes, to take some notes. So get your cuaderno ready and your pluma or your uh, lapis and get ready to write some food words. I'm going to give you a list of words here that you can use in a restaurant. I know all of us have been to a, a restaurant where uh, they serve Mexican food or other types of food from other Spanish-speaking countries. And we've all been to those restaurants. And now, after today's episode, I want to challenge you to really get these words down. And the next time you go in there, I want you to use your Spanish and try it out. And you'll find that uh, it's pretty fun. And it's really great practice. And these people are there, so you really want to take advantage of that opportunity to practice every chance you can. Now, get ready to write because we're going to put some words up for you. Now, we're going to start out real basic. First of all, let's, let's look at food in general. Food in general is called la comida in Spanish. It's la comida. Now, if we want to get more specific to different meals throughout the day, breakfast is el desayuno. El desayuno. And then lunch is el almuerzo. El almuerzo. And then, of course, dinner time. We say la cena for dinner. La cena. <clears throat> now, we have our general meals down. Now let's go into specific food that you may eat at home or in a restaurant or something you may order. We'll start out with different types of meat. Beef or meat in general is called la carne. La carne. Now, if we get specific on what kind, we can look at steak is el biftec, el biftec, and then we have fish, which is el pescado, el pescado, and then very common chicken is el pollo, with the double L, el pollo. Now, once we've got those down, we need to get into some of those side items and vegetables that we order. Vegetables is los vegetales. Los vegetales. And then we have peas, or los guisantes. Los guisantes. And beans are los frijoles. Los frijoles. You'll see those about anywhere you go that speak Spanish. And also potatoes are las papas. Las papas. Lettuce. Very common item in uh, Mexican restaurants is la lechuga. La lechuga. And finally, carrots, another vegetable, is las zanahorias. Las zanahorias. Now, those should just get you started on the vegetables. Now, let's look at some common fruits that you might have. First of all, fruit in general is las frutas. Las frutas. Now, oranges. Las naranjas. Las naranjas. Notice it's different than the color. Anaranjado. They're the same in English, but different in Spanish. Apples are las manzanas. Las manzanas. And plantains, a lot like bananas, are los platanos. Los platanos. Very common in Central and South America. And tomatoes are los Tomates. Los tomates. And now let's look at some a few more side items you might have. First of all, rice, very common in these restaurants. El arroz. El arroz. There's that double R. Let's see if you can trill it. And an egg is el huevo. El huevo. Okay, so that gives you a really good list to start with. Now I encourage you, next time you go to a restaurant, Jot down a few of the words you don't understand. Maybe ask your waiter or waitress. Take the ones home that you don't know, look them up, and be ready to use them the next time. You might find words like asado, which means roasted or cooked in the oven. And so you'll see carne asado. And uh, things like that, you can really expand your uh, vocabulary as you're in one of these restaurants. Now, let's take it a step further and start looking at a verb that you may very well use when you're describing different kinds of foods you like. Now, this verb in Spanish is gustar. Gustar. Now, already you're saying, hey, that's an AR verb. I recognize that. Good. 
And, by the way, we will conjugate this verb the same as we do any other AR verb. It's not irregular. It doesn't break any rules. We're just going to change it, uh, taking off the AR and put those O, AS, A, AMOS, AIS, AN endings on it. But, one thing about gustar is a lot of us think that gustar means to like. And we like to say things like, me gusta beef thick. I like beef. But it doesn't really work like that in Spanish. This verb works backwards from us than it does in English. Because in English, we say, I like steak or she likes chicken. But that's not what gustar means. Gustar actually means to please. It doesn't mean to like. It means to please. And so, when we say, I like chicken, well, we're the ones doing that verb. I like it. So, I'm doing that verb. But in Spanish, it's the opposite. The object does the verb. You see, because it's not that I like chicken. Chicken pleases me, is what you really say. Or, she doesn't like steak. Steak pleases her. So we have to think about it backwards. So we don't really have a lot of use right now. You can later as you expand your Spanish conversation. We don't right now have a lot of use to learn or use these conjugations in our lesson today. What we do want to look at are the bottom ones. Gusta and gustan. These two are going to be the most important when you're talking about things that you like. Okay, so yes, this would be gusto and gustas and gustamos and gustais. And later on, those can filter their way into your conversation. But right now, let's just use these. Now, let's look at our chart for a second. Down here in the bottom left, this is where we normally say he or she, él or ella or usted, the you in the respectful form. Now, <clears throat> also, we're going to add in the concept of it into the bottom left. Because the concept of it really is the same. It's third person. He or she or it does that. And that's how we use it in English. When we say it, we use the same verb as he or she. So we say she knows, it knows. All those kinds of things are the same kind of conju conjugation. So... We're going to put our it's down here in the bottom left. So anytime an it is doing a verb, we're going to use this conjugation. Now, anytime they are doing anything, just like in people, we're going to use this plural conjugation right here. So our it's are over here, our they's are over there. So now let's start putting this together. If I like chicken, as we said before, no, chicken pleases me. Okay, that's how you have to think about it. So, since the chicken is doing the verb, you have to use it, the it form. So, we're going to use gusta. So, if you say, I like uh, vegetables, they please me is what you're really saying. So, we have to use the they form of the verb, gustan. Now, in order to make this all come together, I have to give you a set of new words that we call indirect object pronouns. Now, that's a fancy way of saying it shows us who the verb is done to. So, we know it or they is doing the verb in this case, but who are they doing it to? Does it please me? Does it please you? Does it please her? So, I need to give you those words right now. So, get your, your cuaderno ready and your lapis because I'm going to give you those words and I'm going to give them to you on a chart. All right, so let's draw our chart right over here. Now, there are six words we use to show to whom a verb is done. Now, those six words up here is me, and right here in the middle is te. And down here in the bottom left, we're going to use le. 
So go ahead and start working that chart out in your head. Mete le, mete le. Start getting that down. Now up here in the top right, we're going to put nos. And in the middle right, our vosotros form, we're going to put os. And down here in the bottom right, les. The plural is of this one, les. Now that we're ready to, uh, we've learned these six words, we're ready to start putting things together. Okay. Now, so... For example, let's go back to our original phrase, I like chicken. Okay, first of all, we know we have to think of it in a different way. I don't like the chicken. It's not me that's doing the verb. It's the chicken that's doing the verb. The chicken pleases me is what you're really saying. So the chicken is doing that verb. It is doing that verb. So it's going to be gusta. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put gusta right down here for this particular example. Now, who is it pleasing? If I like it, it's pleasing me. So this word shows that it's done to me. So I'm going to use me. The one up here in the top left that always has to do with me personally. I'm going to use me. The only thing you have to remember is it goes in front of the verb. It goes before the verb. Gusta. So we're going to put it right here. Me gusta. That means I like. So let's just take it step by step. How would I say you like chicken? It's singular. It's an it. So it's going to be gusta. Now how would I say you? The word that we use to talk about somebody directly would be te. So it would be in front of the verb. Te gusta. Okay, so let's just take the word gusta for a minute and just try to put some things together. How would we say then, just to summarize, I like. Me gusta. Okay, now how would you say, let's go down the chart, you like. Te gusta. Now, how would we say, she likes. Something singular. Le gusta. And the same thing for he likes. Le gusta. Now, again, if I were speaking to someone directly, then I wanted to show more respect. The usted form, you like, I could say, le gusta. How do you say, we like? Nos gusta. And then down here in the bottom right, we don't use this one as much around here, but it is, it is used, os. How would you say they like? Les gusta. Now, you're almost there. The only thing you have to remember now is whether or not you're going to use gusta or if you're going to use gustan. This is really easy. If the object you're talking about is just one thing, let's say it's lechuga, lettuce, then it would be gusta because it's an it. If you like something that's plural, a while ago we uh, mentioned the word potatoes, papas. If you say I like potatoes, then you would use gustan. So you would say me gustan. You got it, las papas. So now let's try a couple just to let you think about uh, this process because I know it is a little challenging in the beginning because we have to think about it a little differently than English. Okay, so let me give you a few to try. How would you say, I like tomatoes? Okay, yes, tomatoes is plural, so we're going to use gustan, and I like it, so it's me gustan. Right. How would we say, she likes fish? Okay, le gusta el pescado. Good. Now, let's try a couple of more. How would you say, we like apples? Nos gustan las manzanas. Okay, now let's just try one more just to make sure we've got it. How would you say, they like rice? Okay, les gusta el 
arroz. All right. Start practicing with your food items and what you like and what others like. Now, if you're one of these people that learns a different way, and we all learn in different ways, sometimes this process can be a little confusing. It really can. Because we're asking ourselves, well, who's doing the verb and uh, who's it done to? And, and sometimes that process is a little bit difficult. Some of you may find it easier to simply learn this. I like is either me gusta or me gustan. And you like is either te gusta or te gustan. So I, in that case, all you have to do is remember, is it singular or that you like one thing or you like something plural? Some of you may find it easier to learn it that way. And he likes is le gusta or le gustan. So that may be an easier way for you to learn it. And if so, approach it that way. If you can eventually get into the reasoning why though, because later on in your conversation, you'll find that you have situations where you need to process that difference. You need to process who is it done to and who is it done by. And that will be important in conversation at some point. So if whichever way you learn, start this way or start just the basic way, but eventually progress into why we do it this way in Spanish and process that. That mental processing will be very important later on in conversation. Okay, so now you've got your gustar, you got your indirect object pronouns, and you have your food items. Learn them, and I encourage you to get out there, go to a restaurant, and practice your Spanish. Well, friends, for our culture section today, since we've been talking about restaurants, I thought it would be appropriate to tell you about some dishes in Spanish-speaking countries. These are definitely some dishes that you'd want to try as you're traveling to these countries and experiencing their culture. Now, we all know about paella in Spain. Lots of us have heard about that, the yellow rice with seafood. But Spain is also known for one other dish that's especially popular in Segovia, Spain. It's called cochinillo asado. This is roasted suckling pig cooked in these big fireplaces. This is a really popular dish, well known for Segovia. Now in Peru, they have lots of varieties of seafood, especially being right there on the Pacific Ocean. You can find all kinds of different types of seafood cooked many different ways, and a lot of them are, they have a different texture, different feel than American seafood, so you definitely need to try it. Now in Bolivia, they have a, a liquid, it's almost like a soup, and it's called api, and this is made of purple corn, and it has a pretty different feel than probably what you're used to. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but definitely try it. Now in most Spanish-speaking countries, you're going to find, or Latin America, you'll find yuca. This is the edible root of the yuca plant. It has a lot of the same texture and feel as a potato, but it is still individual in that it has a little bit different kick to it. Now also in Peru and some other countries, you'll find ceviche, raw fish. Now while raw fish may sound a little bit scary, it is marinated in lime juice, so it kills anything in it. It makes it safe for you to eat. In Ecuador, they have yapingachos, which are potato cakes. They're usually served with a uh, peanut sauce and a salad and a fried egg. So those are really good dishes to try as well. So I've given you some great ideas. I, I encourage you to get out there and explore the world of food in Spanish-speaking countries. It's about time to go. So if you have a comment or question for me, you can just send me an email at kodas at aibtv.com. And in the meantime, I wish for you and yours paz y bendiciones. We'll see you next time on Que Hora Es.